This is a morning gecko, and this is my polydarium. These guys have been living peacefully here for a little while now. They have been laying eggs like clockwork, and a few days ago, two of them decided to hatch. So, in this video, we're going to build them a temporary home with this. A glass jar. Now trust me, I know it doesn't look like much now, but just hang on for a little bit. With any new setup, I like to clean the tank. I'm just washing the jar with some soap and warm water. The jar is clean, so let's get on to building the thing. Firstly, I want to make the false bottom. A false bottom is basically where excess water in the jar can drain to. In this case, I'm using Lika, which are just expanded clay balls. You can use gravel, sand, etc. I put in an inch and a half, which was probably overkill, but it's fine. Next up, we need a substrate barrier. This will prevent the false bottom from mixing with the dirt. In this case, I'm using weed barrier, but you could also use a fine mesh. I cut it to fit and placed it in the jar. Here's some charcoal. I'm adding it to the tank to filter water passing through and it can help bind toxins in the tank. Next up is the dirt, also known as the substrate layer. For this, I'm using an ABG mix. It's made up of a handful of things and the exact ingredients are on screen now. It will drain water well while also staying moist. This is my go-to. Anyway, this is a piece of cork bark. I'm going to use it to help me slope the dirt to the back of the tank. This will add a layer of depth and it will also make the tank seem bigger than it actually is. Now, with the hardscape out of the way, let's move on to the plants. I'll put their names up on screen now. All the plants shown here do well in a humid environment. When picking plants for a terrarium or vivarium, do a quick Google search on their care requirements. Plants that like a lot of water do best in these conditions. Before putting any new plants in a tank, you should remove the soil and wash them well. I like to rub the leaves under water to make sure I get everything. From here, I like to soak them in a cup of water for 10 to 15 minutes and then they're ready for planting. Now, before I do anything, using a pipette, I water the soil a little. There is not much I can explain about planting the tank and it's pretty straightforward. Basically, I'm putting the tall plants in the back and the short ones in the front. It's a lot of trial and error and seeing what you think looks good. Here's some sphagnum moss, which I placed around the tank. Something else I like to do with all my setups is add leaf litter. First off, it makes the tank look more natural. It will also serve as a hiding place for the geckos and food for the microfauna. I'll go more into that part later. Before I go any further though, I'm going to give the tank a good misting. Afterwards, I clean the sides of the tank with a towel and q-tip. Now for the microfauna. I'm adding dwarf white isopods and springtails to the setup. These guys will decompose any dead leaves and also clean up after the geckos. So this is what the tank looks like fully planted. All that it needs now are the geckos, right? So, you're probably wondering why I moved them from this paradise to such a smaller tank. Well, there are actually a few reasons. First off, this tank is huge. It's the biggest tank I've ever built. 
I think the baby geckos will struggle to find their food in such a setup. Secondly, the geckos aren't the only inhabitants of this tank. They live alongside with these vampire crabs. Now, the crabs are peaceful with the adult geckos. The adult geckos are actually much larger than the crabs. On the other hand, the baby geckos are tiny. I fear that the crabs would make the baby geckos an easy meal. So, for their safety, I'm going to keep the baby geckos in this tank until they put on some size. For comparison, here's an adult gecko. I mean, she's not a giant by any means, but compared to this, her baby, she's a tank. Before I add them to this setup, I want to ask for a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video or learned something new, please do me a solid and like the video or subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. So, without further ado, let's add these guys to the tank. In a future video, I'll make sure to update you guys on how they're doing. In the meantime, if you're interested in the polydarium I showed at the beginning of the video, here are a few videos on that. That's gonna wrap up this video though, so catch you later.